Hey, pleasure to be everybody. This is Sports Time News. I'm Joe Burke, and this is going to be the latest edition of the Royal Take as you check in on our Reading Royals after a very tough loss to the Anirondack Thunder that they really just did not show up much in. Yes, they did get it to OT, but as Kirk McDonald said in post game, they didn't even really deserve that point. They just didn't really show up and had one of the worst periods of the season in that first period and then couldn't really make it up, even though Mike Chen Gold did give them the lead. This was a game that the Thunder seemed to have better control of play throughout, and they were the deserving team to win, and they were the team that won in the end. The only goal that I would really say Logan Flodell would want back uh, would be Rivera's goal that was able to tie it in the third, but I would then have said if we won this game that I thought it would have been more because of Flodell playing a great overall game. So he had one bad goal put in, but at the same time, he's the biggest reason they got to OT because the Royals did not play a good game in that game against the Anirondack Thunder. And that was just very unfortunate, as we usually expect our running Royals, of course, to play a much more efficient game, much more tighter game, where it looked like they just didn't really come to play and were not ready to play in that first period. And it haunted them. And then they went to compound that one for seven on the power play um, when the Thunder were able to go one for two on theirs, uh, that's not going to get it done. So the Royals were able to at least get one point, but you can't play like that against inferior opponents in last place, at least though the point streak continues. The seven-game win streak is uh, is done, but the point streak continues for our Reading Royals. was not a good game whatsoever. They just got to call a spade a spade, and it wasn't a good game. But the Royals now have time to recover uh, they, of course, are going to have a practice in before they play Wheeling on Saturday at 7-10 and on Sunday, uh, March 13th at 4-10. These are huge games in Wheeling, and then they play Norfolk um, before they play the Thunder again in Reading on Friday the 18th. They play Norfolk on Wednesday the 16th. So they got huge games coming up against a great Wheeling Nailers team, a competitive, uh, not fantastic by the numbers, but competitive Norfolk um, Admirals team, and then you of course have the Anirondack Thunder again as you look to get vengeance on them next Friday. This is a big weekend set for the Royals. I think this team is going to come in really pissed off about that performance they had. Um, that's the vibe <clears throat> that I got from watching the post-game press conference from Kirk McDonald and also um, it just seems like from watching this team and covering this team all season, once they have which it has been rare this year, but a clunker like this, they come out in bunches the next game and really come and arise. And I think they're going to have two good games this weekend against Wheeling. It is really tough, though, to take two on a weekend series from Wheeling, but we did take two from Toledo. And if they can take two from Toledo, the best team in the league, they can definitely take two from Wheeling. This is a bump in the road, albeit it was a huge bump in the road and one of those games you don't want to see as uh, Coach Kirk McDonald addressed in the post-game press conference, because it just seemed like the team didn't really come to play. You have games you lose, but you want to see a better effort and a better groove in the game, and the Royals just really didn't have that, and we're very fortunate to get the overtime point. But as we as we look and preview the weekend, I think they are going to fare well against Wheeling yet again um, as they continue to try to beat Clays and continue to try to beat Cam Hosinger and Watling and the West of the Wheeling Nailers. I think they're going to have a good weekend down in Wheeling, and I think they just unfortunately played down to an opponent, which is a rare thing for the Royals, but that's what they did. And that opponent came in and took advantage of that and won because any team in the ECHL is capable of winning on any given night, even the bad teams like the Thunder this year. If you play down to them and you just don't come out sharp, and that's what the Royals did, they have to come out sharp this weekend is the first key. And also the second key is just skip back to business. Uh, get back to what you're doing in the seven games prior. Just kind of throw that one into the um, trash compound and move on. And then three, you got to keep being able to have this depth like we had with Cressy, with Corms finding ways to continue to score, uh, with Brant continuing to make huge plays. You got Mike Chen to score in the losing effort. So continuing to have great continued depth play is huge as well. But this has been the latest edition of the Royal Take. As we talk about the loss from last night's game, 
but also preview the weekend, which I think will be much brighter, and the team is going to shine much brighter this weekend, playing opponents that are going to come in and really try to step on early, being pissed off after this loss, that they really just did not show up in and did not have a good enough play and effort in overall to be able to beat Anirondack. Whereas Kirk McDonald said, I agree with him, Anirondack deserved to win this game, or win last night's game. But have a great season, pleasure day, everybody. Let's go Royals. Let's beat those wheeling nailers this weekend. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.